hello and welcome again so today we'll be discussing about the uh, page 128 actually now so it has been converted into 128 and that is usml step 1 2021 a microbiological uh, section so <clears throat> today we'll be discussing about the two important thing and one is the pigment producing bacteria and another is the in, in vivo biofilm producing bacteria so pigmentation will be not be much important it can be given you as a primary information and then you have to identify those organism and then a second degree question will be asked so that will be not be as uh, so you just need to remember but biofilm is one of the important problem all around the world biofilm is one of the important problem while you are treating the patient in the ICU into the uh, when you have given any catheter or any thing uh, even even in the case of endocarditis so this <clears throat> biofilm concept will be very important and actually this organism are very high yield organism so let's talk about the pigment producing bacteria so we are talking about the pigment producing bacteria you can see this actinomyces is really which produce the yellow sulfur granules how can we remember yellow sand in israel that can be one of the way to remember staph aureus is a yellow pigmentation and that is due to the uh, this aureus means the latin word and that means the gold actually so yellow pigment uh, will be there then there will be a pseudomonas aeruginosa pseudomonas aeruginosa there will be the uh, formation of the certain uh, certain pigment like pyocyanin pyorubin pyobardin and pyomelanin where so pyocyanin is blue pyorubin is red pyobardin is green and pyomelanin is black and there is another bacteria like Seracea marsensis where they, which will produce the red pigment. So we can understand these are the just uh, if you uh, grow this organism there will be the pigmentation or even in the site of the infection you can uh, see this uh, uh, pigmentation on the basis of this pigmentation many wound infection can be easily identified that a uh, wound is getting blue or green and you can identify there is a pseudomonas infection if there is the red color you can think about the seracea marsensis infection mainly this will grow in the uh, in the icu patient who are very who are on the polymyxin and other drugs like high cholesterol and other drugs for a long period of time and they usually develop this seracea marsensis uh, Septicemia, or you can say, or bacteremia. Then, Staph aureus is the most common organism that is in causing a wound and septicemia infection. It is the most common cause for the osteomyelitis. It is a very nasty and powerful bug. This actinomyces is really is the uh, anaerobic organism, and that is responsible for many anaerobic infection. Okay, and as well as the sort of the filamentous, filamentous bacteria. Now coming to the in biofilm producing bacteria biofilm what is means by biofilm bio you know organism they are talking about film is just they form a layer by layer of the organism so when a bacteria when a bacteria when a bacteria suppose this is the surface when a bacteria get attached over there then it starts to reproduce and it starts to reproduce and form a layer a film like one layer then they form another polymer and they get attached over here so there will be a deposition of this bacteria over this surface and then the, now what happened when you give antibiotic only this outer surface bacteria is killed but inner is not going to be killed. So there will always remain this source of infection all the time and that is the biofilm. So biofilm is actually very difficult to eradicate with the antibiotics. Sometimes there will be need of your uh, like surgery as well. Okay so that is you have to understand very clearly biofilm is either you need to be treated with a very hard with the antibiotics hard and fast so that there will be no formation or they, you can er eradicate or you have to treat for a very long period of time only that is the way out for the biofilm so biofilm are dangerous that you have to understand it is just nothing you have to understand any surface if it is in the heart it can get a surface of the bulb they can deposit over there one then reproduce and form a polymer and then again reproduce and form a layer a layer so when you give antibiotic the upper surface of the bacteria only get killed but the inside the layer the source or say the primary bacteria will never be going to be killed and they will remain there and infection will be persistent so it is very difficult to remove this biofilm and because of that you need to be careful with this organism which which organisms are, have a capacity to produce the biofilm and they are very nasty then they have very uh, difficult to eradicate they are very difficult to treat and that's why they become very important medically now talking about the producing bacteria they are the staphylococcus epidermidis viridians streptococcus like streptococcus mutants and sangu sanguinis then pseudomonas aeruginosa and non typeable hemophilus influenzae so let, let's talk about the Staphylococcus epidermidis. We, when we go and discuss about the gram-positive bacteria, they are even classified into gram cattle streptococci and staphylococci. Staphylococci, you can see a staph aureus and there is the uh, coagulase negative. When you classify gram-positive cattle as 
positive is staph aureus no staphylococci group and negative is streptococcus in staphylococcus group you can again subdivided by the coglis into the staphylococcus aureus and st other negative will be staphylococcus epidermidis and staphylococcus saprophyticus saprophyticus is responsible for urine tract infection in the sexually active female but staph epidermidis this is the normal flora of your screen that can be responsible for catheter and prosthetic device infection so any catheter any prosthetic device which you have entered into your body like you have your hip replacement knee replacement you have a pick line you have a central catheter if it is for the long period of time if you are not changing this iv lines then what happened this normal flow of your skin can colonize over that uh, device and then they will form the biofilm and it will not be removed with the antibiotics you are giving antibiotic surface is killed inside is not killed so you need to remove those device if it is a, a hip replacement you have to remove the remove the hip you have if it is a knee replacement if it is any other prosthetics if it is a pick line iv line central uh, line all those need to be removed because you are not going to get a clear or a perfect result with antibiotics and on so you need to remove it surgically and that is important so you should you can say this this is a simple organism that is remain in the inside your skin it is a part of the normal flora usually it doesn't cover any diseases unless it enters into your blood but if it goes if you have any prosthetic inf device inside your body you pay a lot of money to do the prosthetic replacement hip replacement takes a huge of money and use of uh, labor and surgeon the skill surgeon knee replacement this is are the uh, tough surgery and in that case if you are getting this simple infection they will go and form the biofilm and now you have to remove it surgically you have to remove it the whole plant implant and then only you can be able to cure that infection otherwise otherwise you'll go going to get die with that infection as well so biofilm are very very concerning thing so if, it, if staphylococcus epidermidis what where, where what are the site that will form the biofilm that is the other any extra device inside your body that may be catheter or prosthetic device infection let's move to the another one that is the viridens streptococci and that group, groups include streptococcus mutans and streptococcus sanguinis what is what where they are have the capacity to form this uh, biofilm they are usually produced in your dental so in your and say you can say in your tooth they, they form this dental plague they form the biofilm and it is very very difficult to eradicate and another one is the infective endocarditis so this bug this is this very dense streptococci they are not found to be cause infection lot of infection they are very limited infection i think only two infection they can produce one is the dental infection and another is the heart infection that is infective endocarditis but both are they are going to form a biofilm and they are this is done then become a nasty bug otherwise they are not responsible for any other disease they are the normal common flora of your uh, dental play of your mouth but when they they slowly form this uh, what they form this biofilm and then it is difficult to eradicate from the dental plague or say infective endocarditis and then you have to treat for a prolonged period of time for infective endocarditis and in dental plague either you have to remove the dentist or you remove the teeth or you need to uh, treat for a long period of time so that you have to remember at least you can remember you have understood the concept of the biofilm now you should remember staphylococcus epidermidis okay they are talking about the catheter and prosthetic device now they are talking about the viridens streptococci that is streptococcus mutans and streptococcus sanguinis okay they are talking about only two places dental plague and infective endocarditis then if there will be the pseudomonas aeruginosa pseudomonas aeruginosa you have not then we have we have repeatedly talked about this bacteria and we will talk in detail in later as well but new remember this pseudomonas aeruginosa gram negative oxidase positive pigment producing bacteria we are talking about Talk, I hear, and this <coughs> pseudomonas aeruginosa will cause biofilm formation in the respiratory tree colonization in patient with cystic fibrosis and ventilation associated pneumonia and contact lens associated keratitis. So these are going to cause respiratory colonization in patient with cystic fibrosis. There will be they will form the biofilm. Then they will can form in the ventilation associated pneumonia. So if you are in a ventilator for a, obviously you will be in ventilator for a prolonged period of period of time. In that situation, they will form a, they will cause the pneumonia, and that will be due to the biofilm formation. And now, usually infection can be cured of pseudomonas. But now, since they have formed the biofilm in the ventilation or uh, associated pneumonia, it will be very difficult to eradicate them or treat them. Then they can even cause the contact lens associated keratitis. Those people who are using the contact lens, they can, uh, if there is a formation, there is a pseudomonas infection of their fluid, uh, which we keep contact lens for the, uh, what's the, what the, um, what say you keep for at night. Uh, so storage and that can be if get contaminated with this pseudomonas origination then they'll form a biofilm over there and they will, they can on the lens as well and they can form you this contact lens associated keratitis. 
and there is another non typable hemophilus influenzae although this uncapsulated hemophilus influenzae is not responsible for causing major diseases all those diseases which the hemophilus influenzae we will talk in future will caused by the capsulated organism that is important but uncapsulated organism can also cause a disease and that is due to formation of the biofilm and mainly in the ear infection and that is known as otitis media so the, this uh, in this uh, lecture i can say only one thing that the, you have to remember this biofilm producing organism and where they are related because you you will get this question by for sure because this biofilm is an important problem this hospital acquired infection and they are the major concern in the us and everywhere in the world so you have to remember where and what is responsible staphylococcus epidermidis catheter and prostate device staphylococcus viridens they are talking about dental plague and infective endocarditis pseudomonas erysinosa they are talking about the cystic fibrosis ventilation associated pneumonia or contactless associated keratitis and if they are talking about non typical hemophilus influenzae they are talking about the otitis media and that's all for this lecture thank you